Hey guys, good morning. Coffee time. Just working on a new song here. This is using my Kronos. My Kronos has felt kind of uh, jealous lately because I haven't been playing the Kronos a lot. I've been playing the one around with my Phantom over here more uh, last week and so, but I do want to share with you something today. So today I want to share with you a little tutorial on something that I just discovered last night. For today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create rhythm patterns in your Phantom 6 or 7 or 8 and how to take, when you're creating those rhythm patterns, how to put the fill-ins that are in the rhythm pattern sequencer that's built into your Phantom. So let's get started. Today's tutorial, recording rhythms and patterns in your Roland Phantom O. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Dave again. And the first thing I want to show you, uh, we'll start at the home screen. The first thing I want to show you is how to check to see what version of software you have, or operating system you have on your uh, Phantom. That's going to be very important for a lot of things later on when you want to do sequencing and stuff. There are some new features to the uh, new operating system that you're going to want to know about. And uh, when I got this in, I just got this about oh, a week and a half ago, and it still had the old operating system, the original operating system. So first thing you want to do is go press the menu button and go into where it says system. Then you want to use this knob over here to scroll down all the way to the bottom where it says info. And you want to check to see what version you have. It should say 1.02. That's the newest update. If it says 1.00, then you have the old or the original uh, operating system, and you want to update that. So go on to the Phantom, um, to the Roland website, and it'll show you there's a, a ton of videos on how to upgrade the operate, operating system on your Phantom. And it's very similar to the Phantom, the, the original Phantom uh, two years ago and to the new Phantom O series. The, op, the way to upgrade uh, the operating system is very similar. So he, it's a step-by-step -step process and Ed goes through it very well. So be sure to check out Ed Diaz's videos on that. So uh, once you get the operating system upgraded, then you're ready to do the next part. And you wanna save that. So I'm gonna go back to the homecoming screen. So we're back at the home screen here. I call this the home scene screen. And what I'm going to show you next is how to record uh, different rhythm patterns in your uh, pattern sequencer. And I had to do, let me get over to it. I'm going to go into, hold on. First thing I'm going to go do is go into my, uh, uh, let's go into, I'm just going to pick an open scene. And there's a couple here that I have open. So I'm going to pick this one right here, C44. So just for the heck of it, and let's go ahead and load up the pattern sequencer. And so what, for the last couple days, when I bought this machine, I had certain things in mind of what I wanted to do. And one of the things I want to do is, of course, record songs to be able to go uh, do songs live. And so, one of the things I like to do is program using the rhythm patterns. Now, honestly, some of the rhythm patterns are fine. I really like some of these rhythm patterns. You have all your choices here of patterns, uh, different patterns. Rock, they have uh, hard rock. Actually, if you hit the uh, enter button, you'll get a whole list of them. If you use the knob to scroll up and down, you have rock. Six different versions of rock beats, hard rock. And you can kind of pop. You have all these different rhythm patterns that are already pre-programmed in the Phantom that you can use. And some of them are fine. They're, they're great. They even have intros and fill-ins and stuff. So just for the sake of today's tutorial, I'm going to pick pop. So this is the uh, pop pattern 17, pop 1. So you have an intro. And they usually have little fills. 
Then you have your verse. Now the funny thing is, unless you tap on this screen right here, it won't go to the fill-in. And if you want it to go on to verse 2, then you have to tap on it. Tap on the green again. Tap on the screen again to stop. All right, so let's say I want to use this pattern right here. You can tap on it to start. Tap on it to stop. But here's the thing. Uh, and Ed has lots of videos, and I've looked at all the videos that Ed Diaz does, plus any of the other videos that I could find, and I can't find one video anywhere that shows me how to combine these into my sequence so that I don't have to do separate sequences for each one. Now, there's one video that I saw that Ed did uh, two measures of an intro, and he recorded one pattern on his sequencer in here. So he did one square with a two bar intro, another square with a two bar a verse, and then another square with a two bar fill in. But that to me is like ugh, crazy. That's so super redundant. So what if I just wanted to record, let's say, go back into the pattern. What if I wanted to record an eight bar verse and record this pattern for six measures and then the fill in for two measures, making an eight bar verse okay let's make sure i'm real clear on that i'm going to record this i want to record this pattern three times this pattern one time so that i have eight bars or eight measures and right now there's no way to tap on these or set it up ahead of time so that it'll do that in my sequencer let me turn on my sequencer over here so i'll show you the little trick that i found out now in order to record a rhythm pattern into the sequencer you have to make sure you tap right here where it says rhythm sync so make sure you tap rhythm sync make sure you set the length of how long you want your phrase to be four bars six bars seven or eight in this case eight so i'm going to record let me go back to the rhythm pattern i'm going to record this pattern three times this pattern once it's a trick but you can do it so this pattern is going to start off right there. Let me go back to the sequencer. Hit rhythm sequence. Now watch what I do. I hope this works. Took a little practice. What I'm going to do in just a minute is I have to go over and push the rhythm pattern button twice. Because once I start this, it'll start playing my first pattern. In order to bring up the screen, I have to push the rhythm pattern button twice to bring it back up while it's recording. And then I have to watch the master uh, count up here. This is my ma major count or my bar count. When this gets to bar number six, then I'm going to switch the patterns. Watch. Now I'm going to switch over, push the pattern button again. Get ready to switch. Five, six, here it goes. stop I hope you saw what I just did I had to swing over with and get ready to push that rhythm pattern button twice and then it brought this screen back up so I could switch the patterns while it's recording and watch let me go back to my pattern sequencer now listen to my pattern you're gonna hear six bars of regular beat and then two bars with a fill in Bar three, four, five, six. Here comes the fill in on seven and eight. I hope you were able to see what I did. Let me do another pattern and I'll do it again. <laughs> I had to practice this last night. I finally realized what I was doing. And I was like, oh, I just discovered how to do this. So now I'm going to go back to my uh, pattern sequencer let's say I want to try a different pop pattern I want to use this okay in my chorus let me stop this 
So I'm getting to now the next part I'm going to call the chorus just for the heck of it. And I'm going to use this for six measures and then I'm going to do the fill in. All right, no biggie, right? No biggie, right? But there's nowhere in any books that I saw that shows you how to do this. I just kind of stumbled on it by accident. So I'm going to record this for six measures and then put the fill in. Let me tr get ready here. Set your length, eight measures or eight bars. And then make sure you tap on rhythm sync right here. And then once it does start, you have to go over to the rhythm pattern you have to go over that way to the rhythm pattern button and make sure to push it twice to bring your screen back up while it's playing so here we go now it's going to start go over and push the button again and get ready to switch when it gets to bar number oh i did it too early I did it too early. I messed up. I was jumped in there too soon. So that's simple to fix. Go back to my pattern, click undo. And it'll erase what I just did. Let me do it again. Let me get my pattern back up there. So I'm gonna do that pattern for six measures, then do the villain. So here we go. Set the recording. Rhythm sync button has to be on or this won't work. Make sure it's set for the length you want and start here goes the rhythm push the rhythm pattern button on the side over here again watch your count six seven eight and stop once it gets past eight you'll hear the sound of the uh the, the the sound changes because it stopped sequencing so it's actually playing the sound twice or playing it layer on layer i don't know if that makes sense but you can hear the sound change in the sequencer so let me play the pattern and see if we got it so this is going to be my chorus actually let me i'll let you hear the difference here is the verse okay and you're going to hear the fill in Come in on measure number seven and eight. Here comes eight. Here's the chorus. And pretty soon you're gonna hear the fill in come in at 15 and 16. There. I hope that that helps somebody out there if uh, because there is nothing anywhere that shows you how to do that. It's just something I just fell on and stumbled on by accident. So, when you want to record a pattern like one of these, okay, you can record them as many times as you want. If you wanted to do an intro and do this for two measures and this for two measures like your intro, that would work. Go into your pattern, click on a square, say I call this my intro. Then I'm going to go to my rhythm pattern and I'm going to record the verse for two bars and then I'm going to put this on for two bars. All right, that's almost like a fill, but um, let's try that. So this is going to be four bars long. So I have to set my length. This is my intro. Hit my record sync button. Make sure you press that. Make sure you have the right length you want and then get ready to hit start. And so you have to press that record, a rhythm pattern button has to be pushed twice so you can bring that screen back up. Start. It starts. Okay, get ready. Oh, let me try it again. I stopped it I didn't want to do that. So go back to pattern, undo. There, now it's ready to start again. Click record. Rhythm sync and bring up your rhythm pattern. I'm going to start right there. Okay, so I'm going to record length, rhythm sync, and start. One, two, one, two, one, two. Oh, I want to start there. 
All right, let's try this again. I have to make sure I'm starting on that pattern right there. So go back to there, undo. All right, we're gonna start fresh again. Record, rhythm sync, length is correct, and start. Here goes. And stop. I think I did it. Let me go back to the pattern. So this will be my intro, four bar intro. Here comes the fill in. And stop. So I've got everything laid. I got my verse, my chorus. This is my verse, my chorus. So the pattern A is my verse, pattern B is my chorus, pattern C will be my intro. Not quite the way I usually set it up, but I hope that helps somebody out there. So the answer is yes, you can record changes on those rhythm patterns. You can record any of these patterns you want, just and you can change them during the recording. When you're recording, you just wanna make sure you are watching this screen and watching the bar count up here so that you change them a few beats ahead of time. So if you wanna change the rhythm pattern, say on measure three, you have to push the screen that you want a few beats ahead of time, watch. So this is playing measure one, two. Two, now switch. Here comes in the next sequence. There's like a delay. There's a delay of a, a few beats or a measure before it switches to the next pattern. So this would be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Does everybody get that? So you have to make sure you switch the screen a few beats ahead of time. Not too much ahead of time or it'll screw up your rhythm pattern and it won't be what you want. So you really have to watch what you're doing on this screen. And the other secret is to push that rhythm, bat, uh, rhythm pattern button twice when you're recording so that you bring this screen back up. I hope this made sense. I hope this helps somebody. Uh, the other tip that I showed you was making sure you upgrade your uh, operating system so that you can change the length of your songs to 64 measures. That's a huge benefit. Plus, you can also change the uh, time signature. I'm going to try something here. Hold on. I'm going to go down here, go into my pattern record, and pick a square, any square. <laughs> Let's look at something. Ah, I thought so. So if you, a new feature of the operating system upgrade is that you can also use different time signatures. So you just tap on time signatures, then you can set this for like seven, five, four, or seven, eight. All right, so that's really cool. If you want to record something with it, I think though the only stipulation is you have to use that time signature for the whole song or for the whole pattern. All right. But that is a new feature, which is really nice. And also you have to make sure you set your length. Now you can also record songs up to 64 measures or 64 bars. So if I'm recording a song in 4-4 and I want to record it 64 measures long, then that's pretty that's almost a whole song right there you could record almost a whole song straight from start to finish just on one pattern if you want to so if i hit start like this and then start playing I could record without even having a drum track in the recording and go back to my pattern.
So with 64 bars, you could record something like that freestyle, I guess is what I call that without any drum track. It's not going to fall into the exact meter, but that's okay. You could always go back in and record drum tracks to go with it or accents like uh, cymbals. There we go. Uh, let me try it. If I want to record a freestyle rhythm pattern to go with my freestyle piano, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to restart it. Find the sounds you want. Maybe some cymbals. Maybe a bass drum. Hi hat. Bass drum. And some cymbals. Here we go. just goofing around and so you could record a rhythm track that doesn't necessarily have to follow the metronome just turn the metronome off and follow the piano all right and then you would have a a uh, song I hope this helps you. If you like this video, please hit like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that little bell on the side so you'll be notified when I put out another video. Have a great day. Take it easy. Catch you later. Bye.